Good day, grade 9 learners. This is Teacher Lester, aka Sir Les, and I welcome you all to another fun and meaningful learning. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be updated of new uploaded videos. So for today's video, we will be talking about the history of arts or art history in the world. And this is actually discussed in the first quarter of your module. So what are we waiting for? Let's get this video started. Class, our lesson for today is entitled the Western Classical Art Traditions. And for us to be guided with our discussion for today, let us consider the following learning competencies. The learner analyzes art elements and principles in the production of work following the styles of a Western and classical art. The learner identifies distinct characteristics of arts during the different art periods. The learner identifies representative artists from various art periods. The learner compares the characteristics of artworks produced in the different art periods and the learner creates artworks guided by techniques and styles of Western classical art traditions. Now, let us proceed to the discussion proper. Western Classical Art Tradition Learners, the very first period of art to consider is the ancient art era which happened in 1,500,000 before Christ era to 2,000 before Christ era. This includes prehistoric and Egyptian. Let's first discuss about prehistoric era. Prehistoric era includes all human existence before emergence of writing. Understanding of early human life and culture is very important. Now, let us explore more about prehistoric era through its paintings, sculptures, and architecture. Let's have first prehistoric era paintings. These are characterized as found inside caves. It is a way of communication. Artifacts as humans first created art, and animals usually correct in proportion. This is an example of prehistoric era painting found in Cave of Lascaux. Another one is the Great Hall of the Bulls. Another one is the Lateral Passage. Another one is the shaft of a dead man. And we also have the chamber of engraving. We also have the painted gallery. And we also have the chamber of felines is still found in the cave of Lasco. Now let's proceed to prehistoric era sculptures. It is characterized as Materials used vary according to region and locality. Frequently, carving may have mythological or religious significance. Here are examples of prehistoric era sculptures. The first one is Venus of Willendorf. The second one is Venus of Brassempoi. Now let's proceed to prehistoric era architecture. Here are its characteristics. These are based on megaliths or a big rock. This word comes from the Greek words lithos meaning stone and megas meaning big. It is made of huge stone blocks intended for burial. It provided plenty of legends and superstitions and during this era stones and rocks were associated with divinity. There are different types of prehistoric era architecture. Three main types of megalith stones are Menhir. Menhir are huge, vertically standing stone on the ground, usually in the middle of the field or arranged in rows. Dolmens are another ones. Dolmens are stone table form of table consisting of two huge standing stones supporting a horizontal giant stone believed as grave or altar. And the third one is Cromlech. This is a circle of standing stones. 
here are the appearances of those different architectures. The first picture shows men here. The second picture shows dolmens. And the third one shows cromlech. We're done with prehistoric art. Now let us proceed to Egyptian art. Egyptian art is characterized as make deceased afterlife place pleasant. Themes include journey to the underworld by their protective deities, emphasizes the importance of life after death, and the preservation of the knowledge of the past. Egyptian paintings are characterized as highly stylized, symbolic, and shows profile view of an animal or a person. Its main colors are red, black, blue, gold, and green. These colors have meanings for them. These are examples of Egyptian paintings. The first one is the paintings from sarcophagus of Tutankhamen, the 18th dynasty. The second painting is still found from the same sarcophagus. Now class, let's proceed to Egyptian era sculptures. These are its characteristics. Symbolic elements such as forms, hieroglyphics, relative size, location, materials, color, actions, and gestures were widely used. Most common materials used are wood, ivory, and stones. And these are other characteristics of Egyptian era sculptures. Symbolisms were heavily used to represent the gods. Relief compositions were arranged in horizontal lines. Gods were shown larger than humans, kings larger than their followers, and dead larger than the living. Empty spaces were filled with figures or hieroglyphics, and all individual components were all brought to the plane of representation and laid out as writing. Here are examples of Egyptian era sculptures. The first one is Queen Nefertiti's sculpture painted limestone. The second one is the Pharaoh Menkare and his queen and it is made up of stone. And uh, now let's proceed to Egyptian architecture. Here are its characteristics. It has thick sloping walls with few openings for stability. All walls, columns, and piers are covered with hieroglyphics. Ornamentations were symbolic, and temples were aligned with astronomically significant events like solstices and equinox with precise measurements. And here are examples of Egyptian architecture. The first one are the pyramids of Giza. Most substantial ancient structures of the world is its title. Composed of three pyramids that are funerary structures for the three kings of the fourth dynasty, namely Khufu, Kafa, and Menkaura. Made highly confusing and with many tunnels to create confusion for grave robbers. Here is the picture or illustration of the pyramids of Giza. Now let's proceed to the Egyptian temples. Egyptian temples are built to serve as places for residents for the gods, served as the key center for economic activity, made of wood, reed matting, and mud brick, and walls were covered with scenes, scenes of pharaoh fighting in battles and performing rituals with the gods. And then we also have the mastaba, this is the Egyptian tomb in form of a flat roofed rectangular structure with outward sloping sides. It is made of mad bricks or stones. And here is the illustration of the mastaba. Learners, we're done with ancient art. Now let's proceed to classical art which happened in the year 2000 before Christ era to 400 before Christ era. And significant people behind this type of art 
the classical art are the Greeks and Romans. So there are two types of classical art. It's the Greek Roman art or Greek classical art and Roman classical art. Let's first discuss about classical Greek art. These are the characteristics of classical Greek arts. Most commonly found in vases, panels, and tomb, depict natural figures, subjects or battle scenes, mythological figures, and everyday scenes, and linear perspective and naturalistic representation. The most common methods of paintings are fresco and encaustic. Fresco is a water-based pigments on a freshly applied plaster on the walls. Ideals for murals, durable, and matte style. And the second one is the encaustic, which is developed by great ship builders. Used hot wax to fill cracks of the ships. Pigments were added and used to paint a wax hull. Here are examples of fresco painting and encaustic painting. Learners were done with the methods of classical Greek painting and now let's proceed to the different types of painting of the Greeks based from to where they paint their artworks. First one is the vase painting. Vase painting of the Greeks adopted kerch style. It is also referred as kerch vases and they are red figured pottery. Shapes commonly found are pelike or wine container, lecanis, a low bowl with two horizontal handles and a low broad foot, lebes gamikos or with high handles and lid used to carry bridal bath and crater and this is bowl used for mixing wine and water. Here are examples of the illustrations of these vases. First is the Kirch vase Telike. The second one is the Kirch vase Lycanis. The third one is the Kirch vase Lebes Gamikos. And the fourth one is the Kirch vase Crater. Kirch vases have common motifs. These are life of women, mythological beings popular among the people of the Black Sea, seen from a mythical story or event, uses the technique polychromy, a combination of different colors, especially the brilliant ones, in an artistic manner. And uh, we also have panel painting aside from vase painting. These are paintings on flat panels of wood by the Greeks. It can be either small, single piece, or several panels joined together. And most of it doesn't exist anymore because of its organic composition. Here are examples of classical Greek paintings in panel. The first one is the pizza panel, which is the very first panel painting of the Greeks. And aside from vase and panel painting, we also have tomb slush wall paintings. These are popular during the classical period. Uses the method frescoes in either tempera or water-based or encaustic or wax. Sharp, flatty outlined style of painting. Only few samples survived and painting this one is using a true fresco technique with limestone mortar. Depict symposium scene on the wall. And here is an example of tomb or wall painting by the Greeks, which is entitled Tomb of the Diver. And now class, let's proceed to classical Greek sculptures. Classical Greek sculptures are characterized as tense and stiff, and body were hidden within enfolding robes. After three centuries, it evolved and showed all the points of human anatomy and proportion. Classical Greek sculptures adopted Hellenistic style. Hellenistic style is the preference in sculpture for more elaborated patterns, 
mannered arrangement of figures and groups, and an emphasis on the representation of movement for dramatic effects. Here is an example of Hellenistic style by the Greek sculptors. Myron, the Discobulus. And now let's proceed to the classical Greek architecture. In temples consisted of a central shrine or room in an aisle surrounded by rows of columns. Buildings were designed in one of three architectural style or order. This is among Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian style order. One example of classical Greek architecture is the Parthenon. It is the greatest classical temple ingeniously engineered to correct an optical illusion. Its columns were slightly contorted, swollen at the center and leaning inwards to correct the impression of deadness and top heaviness. Here is the illustration or picture of the Parthenon. Learners, we're done with classical Greek art. Let's proceed to classical Roman art. Classical Roman art is characterized as most paintings were copied from Hellenic Greek paintings, fresco techniques was used in brightly colored backgrounds, division of the wall into a multiple rectangular areas, tic-tac-toe design, and multi-point perspective and tropmel oil effect. Roman paintings have a wide variety of subjects, animals, everyday life, still life, mythological subjects, portraits, and landscapes. Development of landscape painting is the main innovation of Roman painting from Greek painting. Here is an example of fresco from Villa of Mysterious. And another one is the Bosco Trecase, Pompeii, still a fresco of the classical Roman painting. Aside from fresco painting of the Romans, we also have the mosaic painting, which is a very significant contribution of Roman painting in the history. It is an art process where image is created using an assemblage of small pieces of colored glass, stones, or other materials. It is used for decorative art or interior decorations. Here is an example of classical Roman painting made from mosaic. It is the head of Alexander. He is the hero of the Romans as we all know. And now let's proceed to the classical Roman sculptures. It is made of monumental terracotta. It produced reliefs in the great Roman triumphal columns with continuous narrative reliefs around. Here is an example of the classical Roman sculpture, which is called the Portonacho Sarcophagus. Here is another classical Roman era sculpture, which is called as Sarcophagus from Servetiri. Now learners, let's proceed to the classical Roman architecture. The architecture of the Romans are characterized as sturdy stone structures both for use and to perpetuate their glory. Emperors erected huge halls and arena for public games, baths, and procession. It was built with gigantic arcs of stones, bricks, and concrete or with barrel vaults. And here is an example of the classical Roman era architecture which is the very popular in Rome, the Colosseum. Class, we're done with the two earliest periods of art, which are the ancient art and the classical art. And now let's proceed to the third one, which is the medieval art, which happened in the year 400 BC and ended up in the year 1400 AD. And uh, there are different types of medieval art which are Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic art. Let's first discuss about Byzantine art. Same process as before, let's first discuss about its painting, and next one is its sculpture, and the third one is its architecture. Let's proceed to the Byzantine painting. Byzantine painting is lively styles of painting 
which has been intended in Greek and Rome lived on the Byzantium, but this time for Christian subjects. Greek and Oriental styles blend together in magnificent, imposing images which adorned the churches in large and small forms. Here is an example of uh, the Byzantine painting which is made through mosaic and uh, this is entitled The Court of Empress Theodora. Here is another one which is the portrait of the Empress Theodora. And now let's proceed to Byzantine sculpture. Dominant themes are religious, everyday life scenes and uh, motifs from the nature. Animals were used as symbols while some had acrostic signs that contained a great theological significance. And here are examples of Byzantine era sculpture. This is the Barberini diptych. Let's proceed to Byzantine architecture. It has a lot in common with early Christian architecture. In here, mosaic decoration was perfected as the use of the Clara story to bring light in from high windows. Hagia Sophia is an important element of the Byzantine architecture. The meaning of this is holy wisdom. It narrates how a significant construction transformed from being a church into a mosque into a museum. Hagia Sophia is one of the biggest domes ever created. And that's it for Byzantine art. Let's proceed to Romanesque art. Romanesque painting is largely placed mosaics on the walls of the churches that follow a strict frontal pose. Mozarabic influence is the style of painting of Romanesque. Elongated oval faces, large staring eyes, and long noses, figures against flat colored bands, and heavy outlinings are its characteristics. Here is an example of Romanesque painting which is done through mosaic entitled as the Christ in Majesty. And then we have the Romanesque sculpture. Famous pieces are reliquaries, altar frontals, crucifixes, and devotional images. The small works made of costly materials for royal and aristocratic patrons. Here is an example of the Romanesque era sculpture which is entitled The Last Judgment. And uh, now let's proceed to Romanesque architecture. Romanesque churches have grand sculpted doorways or portals. Wood or metal doors are surrounded by elaborate stones sculptures arranged in zones to fit architectural elements. And here is an example of Romanesque era architecture, the groin vaulted crypt of Worcester Cathedral. Learners, we're done with Byzantine and Romanesque. Let's proceed to the last topic, which is the Gothic art, still in medieval period. The Gothic era painting is confined in the illumination of manuscript pages and the painting of frescoes on the walls of churches in cosmopolitan style, elegant, mannered, and sophisticated. And here is an example of Gothic era painting. It is entitled as The Lady and the Unicorn Tapestry. And here is another one which is called The Shepherd David. And uh, one important technique of the Gothic painting is the stained glass windows. They were created to transform the vast stone interiors with warm and glowing color and at the same time to instruct Christians in their faith. So here is an example of stained glass painting during the Gothic era. It is called as the rose window from the north transept. And now let's proceed to the Gothic sculptures. Gothic sculptures have greater freedoms of style. No longer lay against walls but began to project outward. Figures were given their own particular attitude instead of being set into particular patterns and more lively and realistic. Here is an example of the Gothic era sculpture which is called as the Resurrection of the Virgin. As you observe, they have deeper carving. And now, let's proceed to Gothic architecture. 
Its design includes two new devices called as Pointed Arc and Stone Vaulting. Pointed Arc, which enabled builders to construct much higher ceiling vaults and stone vaulting born on a network of stone ribs supported by piers and clustered pillars. Here is an example of Gothic era architecture, which is known as Cathedral of Chartres. For your performance task, choose one from the activities below. Instructions in each task are given in your learning activity sheet in arts. Wire sculpture, ivory carving, light me up, mosaic greeting cards, rock my world, draw me, and my dream house. Note learners that you only have to select one and pass it to the Google Classroom for your teacher to check it and grade it later on. And thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have enjoyed exploring the very history of the world of art. Again, class, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be updated of new uploaded videos. So let's call it a day. This is Sir Lester saying, let's dream and make it happen. See you all on my next video.